I'm Avery. I'm uh, going to do another episode of Dummy Thwack, the sword pill train uh, videos that I've been doing. Uh, some people have said that they're somewhat handy, so I'll try to continue a little bit. This also happens to be my hundredth day of consecutive pill practice uh, for the, the Reaver Challenge done online. So uh, I thought I would get two birds with one stone. So what I've been doing is a minimum of a hundred shots, often more, uh, every day regardless of travel, rain, sick, sunshine, whatever. And uh, if you miss a day, you just start over. Um, so what I've been trying to do though, is practice one particular shot the whole time, which is offsides. I did a couple videos on how uh, I did offsides at the beginning of that. And I thought for this one as a quick recap, I might talk about the different styles of offsides I've been working. I won't focus too much on the first two fundamental ones that are in my first videos, but one of them I'm calling, and these are not great words, so I'm gonna come up with better terms. Um, but if I do counter rotated, that means this hip comes forward, the hand comes forward almost in a line, it looks almost like an onside shot here, leg comes out, whips at the end, it only comes to the offside, right? Um, the other one is to rotate my hips the same direction, that's what I'm calling pro rotated. And if your hand's up here, looks like that, a little tricky to lock the body into the hand a little bit. Um, but using those two, as well as a third mechanic, I'm able to put together a variety of different shots, and I'm emulating a bunch of different people, so I thought I would go through each of those people. Um, that third mechanic, though, first is a pendulum. So that's when the blade is facing me, and I rotate like that. So I've got a video on those as well from a long time ago. Most people call them a pendulum shot. There's a lot of ways to get into that position. Um, Duke Sean has a video where you throw a feint to the outside, and you're actually rolling the hand back to here. You see, looks a bit like, and it looks like a threat to that side, but really what I'm doing is drawing the opponent over here and then throw into the body or armpit, you know, maybe the head. So that pendulum shot is the third mechanic and, and the way that that one works, Duke Sean could probably talk better. But if you leave aside the feint part and just talk about the mechanics of the blow, you end up here and you get most of the power by lifting the elbow and keeping the blade somewhat tight. You can practice with your mechanics to extend. A little trickier, but if you're in tight, that's that one that'll just tag people in the armpit. Or in the body, not too hard to do leg, not too hard to do head. And that one gets a lot of power without you using your body much because that rotational motion, and I've got a weak shoulder from injuries, um, can get a lot of power. So that's almost 720 degrees of rotation building the whole time. Um, so. How do I put those together to try to emulate some of the great shots of other people? And then there's other mechanics altogether. So one of the ones I've been working with it, uh, with Brandon Knight, um, who's uh, a US national champion many times in sword and buckler, and, uh, and I believe the international champion as well, not sure. He does something similar to that, the body pick over here, and I thought he was throwing it at range. And to me, when I was his opponent, it looked like a shot that just went pop, like that really quickly between the sword and the shield to hit me in the body. No matter how many times I was prepared to block it, no matter how tight I got my defense, you just kept going pop really quickly. I'm like, how do you get that power? Well, it turns out he was actually doing some of that wind up of the pendulum, and Brandon's gonna tell me, no, nope, Avery, you still gotta work on this one. He's just been teaching me lately. But instead of coming forage facing, it's still forage that way, and then often on the step, and instead of the hand projecting out, a little bit of body lean forward, and the hand over the head, almost back. So, and he often does that on the move, so it looks like, and that comes in with a lot more power than if I just go, you know, sort of a punch, or this rotation felt like it was really hurting my arm, but here, I feel like I'm starting to get it, and the thing that really helped for me is thinking of a hanging guard after the movement. So again, often on the body shift to the right, throwing it trailing behind you, here. Another type of shot I see a lot, particularly from lefties, I saw this in on tier a lot, if some offsides end with the blade sort of either somewhere between 90 degrees and say 30, 25 degrees from the wrist, there's some offsides that end up with it totally aligned. So if some shots end here, these ones like this often start out wound like this. So it's almost like a hammer blow with a bit of a rotation in the wrist at the end. So this coming straight down will be a chop, but you see guys going like this a lot. Now they're taking that 
straight down mechanic here using a little tricep, a lot of finger width. You can get a ton of power here, especially if you sink the body. Or if you wind up like this, so you'll see often in photos, like if someone is really good at offsides, you'll often see right before a bunch of people comment, ooh, you see them like this. And their body's over, sometimes blocking, especially with a center grip, you see this, especially lefties. Because from here, you can uncork. I'm not throwing this very hard because I could probably snap this trainer. But you get a lot of power there. Now, this is not a good position to be in. I'm just sort of illustrating. But if you get someone out of position and then, you know, you can really light into someone with a lot of power. Let's see. Uh, what else? Um, ah, yes. Okay. So another one that I've been working on a little bit that's been difficult for me because of my shoulder injury is emulating another good steel fighter uh, named Colin. Colin has this nice setup that tags people in the armpits a lot of all different skill levels. And the way that he sort of described to me that he throws it originally is a bit of a fake up to the head. That's to get the body moving. And then a feint to the leg. It might actually cut here. And then exploding out across this way. So to me, that felt like he's going into, it looks like feint, cut, pull. And he can also, if he's being nice, instead cut down into the head. So instead of ripping up into someone's armpit. But this motion was really hurting my shoulder. There's a lot of impingement there. And I suspect that if it's hurting my bad rotator, it's probably not good for even a healthy rotator cuff. So I've been trying to figure out, and I'm not saying that's the way he threw it, that's the way I read him as throwing it. Um, so I think the way he's doing it, or at least the way that I would recommend doing it, is keeping the shoulder blade settled back in the shoulder pocket. And for me, if I keep my elbow tight against my waist, I can still throw without um, causing any bite in this biceps tendon. So if I end up in this position, throwing here nice and tight, not a problem. Especially on the rise, if I miss clean, no problem. It doesn't cause any impingement in the shoulder, whereas if I actually lift and I do shoulder abduction, to get my arm up and out, get my elbow away from my body, that's where I start feeling pain. So if I do here, and then keeping that elbow in tight actually helps with this early feint. This one, again, maybe it takes a leg, maybe it doesn't. You're really just pulling through to this position and up into that armpit. And you can actually still, even with the elbow tight, end up at pretty good range. And I just project it out as opposed to up and away. So that's... I've been calling that a call and rip because rest in peace when it hits you. Um, i trying to think. Oh, yes, and then moulinets. Moulinets are another way to throw a blow on that side. So a moulinet is often involves dropping the handle. And it, so it's, it's this rotation around the center of gravity of the sword. So a classic moulinet. And the nice thing about a moulinet, you can do them in any plane. You do a moulinet to the head. That looks a bit like the end of the snap. The classic moulinet is straight down the slot here. We can also do a Moulinet offside. So Duke Sean has a nice video where he shows you end up over here, say, with a high wrap. As soon as you have the handle higher than the tip, you can throw a Moulinet. You see, Sean often hits people on this side of their hip, their body, as he's over here, because you'll do something like over here and then into that hip that just sticks out a little bit. So you get that motion over here and then not great on a pill because you have to kind of cut down but you can get a moulinet into the body, you can even moulinet there. So this is just the end of the motion, but it's a pull down. I, I'm sinking my body a little bit and rotating my hips, or rotating my heels, I should say, to get some left. But this is not, not difficult because here I'm working with gravity a bit and it's just a rotational shot. If you end up in a position where you're like this, all you need to do this comes straight down, it's still on that offside. You can also moulinate to the head, and even from this position, moulinate onside. So that's another fun one. Uh, oh, and then of course, um, one of the most common, uh, Count to Adam, uh, uh, has a great set of setups where he's, especially he'll fight with a shield, uh, arm strap, round shield, low to protect his legs, sword guard here, what he wants is someone to throw a shot over here. Because as soon as, he, as soon as he blocks here, then he's immediately wound up, right? So if you see him 
you know, keyed up or anyone keyed, sort of keyed up in this position, especially single sword, they either want to they either want to take a shot and block, parry it down, and then they're in that hammer strike position from before, right? Or they want to go here, and from this position you can see it doesn't take a lot to counter rotate the body back. So from here, this is a great position to throw offsides from. The problem is, from your guard, you have to do something first. So if you see if you step in on someone and do this, they know that you're throwing an offside next, probably. But if you can pick it up with block for defense and then follow their blade back, if someone's foolish enough to throw this and then recover this way, they just lost. So those are some of the offside mechanics I've been covering. None of these, some of the offside mechanics I've been practicing. Sorry, talking a mile a minute. I doubt the video covers them well enough to get into any of them, but someone's like, okay, what are the shots that you've been learning? Um, if you have feedback, I really love it. If you have questions about any of those particular mechanics, not only will I try to get into them a little further, I'll also talk to the people who are helping me with them or the people that I'm just copying. And uh, maybe they'd be willing to answer your questions better than I could. So that's it. Thanks.